I guess I'll just squeeze in. Thank you. Oh, serves me right. I set up my area to film and walked away. And now I've got two cats on here. You, I don't think you can see them. But I've got both Salem and Bramble here on the table. It'd be good. See, what he's after, right, is my mum has these little display... No. <laughs> she has these little display pieces in her uh, tear tray. And you know the, um, was it wheat, like dried wheat? He loves it. He, he, he will steal it out of the flower arrangements. And he loves the sound. Yeah, but it's like stuck on things. So he is trying to steal some of that. Yeah, go on. <laughs> anyway, hello, I'm Adele. Welcome back to Toadstool House Art. So this week I have, um, some oh he almost fell off the table so <laughs> i have some uh sublimation printing to do which i have talked about but i don't think i've ever shown no i've not shown it yet so i am going to be printing because i have a birthday present to make for a friend so what i have are these linen uh we i call them pennants but they're like wall hangings and you can display pins on them as well so what I want to do for her is uh, a personalised one with her name on. Um, I'm not quite sure what design I'm going to go with yet. Um, but I'm sure I'll, I'll probably do it in Procreate and on my iPad. Because I bought her a little, a little pin and then I thought, oh, I can make pin this way so I should make her one. Because I've bought her several over the years. So you're, you're actually going to see me get out the, the heat press and do some sublimation printing. So yeah, <laughs> like I say, I've got to, I've got to design that. Uh, in fact, I'm even drinking out of one of the, come on, one of the uh, uh, mugs that this is something from my mum's shop. Um, it's an autumn mug, so I know it's a bit early, but I'm using this one because it has a slight chip in the bottom that I didn't notice until I finished printing on it, uh, because I do most of the actual sublimation printing. Mm. Um, and plus autumn is my favourite season and it's not warm today because I don't know British summer sunburn one day frostbite the next <laughs> so yeah this cup is mine and it says autumn is here and I'm here for it <laughs> which I don't know if anyone else has got that saying but I I, I came up with that one because she's got my mum sorry she's got access to a lot of these different images that from a site that you can take them and use them for your own sublimation uh, and you're allowed to add little bits on before you sell them so that's what we've been doing so yeah if you are interested in any of these these autumn mugs i've put the link for her her youtube channel and her uh, etsy shop because it's so unique uk by julie so in fact if you if you follow her you'll have already seen these because these about i think about two weeks ago we did these we showed them off in a vlog um, no, a podcast. We do a podcast together every month. I've been doing that with her for a, oh, probably, no, two years. Two years we've been doing that now. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, I am being watched by a cat. He's just, he's just waiting for his opportunity to mess with all of this stuff up. Salem, go on. God, he's, he's the naughty one, but he pretends he's not. But... Oh yeah, uh, it's cooler today. So I've got my, I got this new jumper and it is all cats. And I realize I am now that crazy cat lady and I am okay with that. <laughs> um, I've also got uh, another water color coming up. I've actually done it. I'm actually ahead. So I've done it, I've filmed it and it's, it's ready to go into this. So I can probably start editing it today. So that's coming up and I've got some more digital art from like 
key rings key ring series that i've got coming up so yeah i hope you enjoy watching that and hopefully my cats won't get in the way too much <laughs> thanks for coming by right so i'm back again uh doing a sketch for another watercolor piece uh this time i'm doing a frog which i don't think i've ever drawn before um, not that I can remember, maybe as a kid, but the, the sketch for this uh, took a long time. As you probably noticed at the beginning there, it didn't... <laughs> it did look pretty ugly. <laughs> uh, but eventually I got it to a place where I was happy with it. Uh, so this is based on a common frog. Um, so, which I didn't realise, they have four sort of like finger claw things, not three. And... On its back I decided to add a little flower because obviously with the frog being green I thought maybe something to sort of balance that out colour wise so I'm doing this sort of like um, it's going to be a pinky sort of purpley flower. And when I was happy uh, with the sketch I used my, my LED light pad to trace it out onto some watercolour paper and the pen I'm using and it's, it's the pen I always use is a Copic multi-liner in the colour sepia. I have a, a number one and I have a 0.5 and for the for this part here I will use the 0.5 most of the time and then at the end when I go over I will use both to add different line weights. So as you probably know watercolour you have to work in layers and having never painted a frog before I really sort of slowed down and just took my time with it and did a lot of very gentle washes starting out with a, a kind of yellowy green and then moving on into deeper greens and I think I used every possible shade on this one because these frogs have a paler underbelly so it's sort of yellowish and on the back they have these green markings in, in all different colours of green and I I mean I, th I think it turned out pretty well I did um, just to help that the green pop you want to go with a complementary colour and red is green's complementary colour so I added in just a bit of very pale red on areas that I wanted to bring out like on its near its mouth on its front legs and on its back legs there because as you can see the, the back legs the way they fold they're getting a bit a bit hidden it's not super clear that they're folded while it's all like sort of covered in paint like that but I add in various different shades of green just to make bits pop so like the bits that stick out like its nose and it's sort of like elbow areas and its thighs I use like a, a yellowy green that makes it just come forward so yeah, I think I probably will do some more froggy things. Um, this was quite difficult, uh, but I, I did enjoy it in the end. And I think it's, I think he's a cutie. Oh, and there I am adding in his his dark spots because these frogs have spots all over their sort of lower back and legs. Um, from the position of mine, it is a little bit difficult to see because you can't see his back. Oh, and they have these um, sort of like yellowy orange eyes as well. So that flower there is is. A clematis which they're part of the buttercup family and there's I think there's about 300 in the genus but uh, the ones I was sort of inspired by are these very sort of pinky purple ones they're very bright and they have these sort of dark green leaves and I just thought that would be a great contrast to the to the green of the frog um, I don't know if you would find clematis and common frogs in the same place <laughs> um, so if there are any sort of people who know about that sorry if that's wrong <laughs> but so I've seen other artists do frogs with like flowers and strawberries and I just think they look really adorable when there's like something sat on their back like that so I think this one's gonna make a, a really cute pin and the way I did the sketch it fits perfectly into like the size of square I need to do it it's like not too long not too short so I think it's gonna come out really nice and there's that pen again it again it's the sepia tone one and I just go over and I thicken everything up 
and I do use a very very fine black um, liner and that is for areas in shadow so I, I used it a bit uh, to show that back leg and um, just wh wherever I think uh, a shadow would be to separate it and there it is I even added uh, a little a few white highlights with a, a Posca pen and I think he's really cute I like the way I did his eye shines and yeah, I hope people like him because uh, <laughs> like I say I do and he took I don't know if he took the longest of all the illustrations I've done so far but he he certainly took his time <laughs> And I think that I like that Clementis. I know I do like the sort of messy watercolor style. I think that works really well here. So I decided on a design for the pin display I'm doing for my friend. I decided to do a lovely pastel galaxy. And in Procreate, there's something called the Nebula Brush. And that helps you get that sort of cloudy galaxy texture. So I'm using that in lots of pinks, purples, a little bit of white. And then I'm going in with some sparkles. And I've got lots of sparkle brushes. So it was really just a case of, of picking the right one. And then I just go over with little stars, big stars. And then in certain places, I deepen the color. And I think this looks really good. <laughs> okay, so I've put my uh, design into Photoshop uh, so I can add in the lettering. Um, I added in like a little a little guide. I measured down from the the top of the pennant how far the writing needed to be down, and then I've just done it in white. But to make it stand out, I've added like a a blue shadow. It won't show up too well, but it'll just make the, the white on top of it pop. So if I turn it off, yeah, you can see there's a definite difference. So I, I just want the text to be really clear. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to send this to the sublimation printer that we've got and see how it turns out. Because I will need... The, the pennant is about the size of an A4 sheet of paper. So I'm, I'm going to have to use the whole sheet, so... And a lot of ink so I hope it works out okay so now I'm ready to print I've got my printer all set up I've done uh, the print test because uh, you always need to check your inks before you start printing because uh, sublimation inks are, I think they're a bit thicker and they can clog your printer so if you if it's been sat for a while you always need to do a, a nozzle check so, oh, I've lost focus uh, so this this is in word now and I'm just about to print and whenever you print anything sublimation, you need to go into your printer settings and set it to mirror. So it prints one way, you flip it over, and then you'll print it the right way up. And I've also got the quality set to high. So I'm going to print this now and hopefully it should work. Right, so I've just had to print three times because I kept messing it up. The first one came out crooked, uh, which was my fault because I forgot to move this little clip along to hold the paper in place. And then the second one, I forgot to take off borderless printing. So I came out with a border and you need, you need the full page to be able to fit the pennant on because it's about the size of an A4 sheet of paper. And the, but it worked out because look at the quality difference. This is the third one. This is borderless printing. Look how much better that came out. And these were all printed at high quality, um, which just means that the printer wasn't actually ready for printing, even though I did a nozzle check and it was all, all looking good. Um, sometimes with sublimation inks, you need to print a few, thing, few very colourful things just to draw the ink through. So, so I was really worried then, you know, that I'm, oh, I'm wasting ink, but no, look at the difference. So much more vibrant, so much more, look at the detail I got on that one compared to the others. So yeah, so some things <laughs> seem like a mistake, but they do work out for the better. So now I can get the, uh, the heat press out and get that ready to go. Oh, 
Okay, so I've set my heat press to uh, 185 degrees and I've set the timer to 75 seconds because the pennants don't need to press for long. But this thing, uh, it's not the biggest you can get. You can get about an A4 sheet of paper in here. It is, it's quite slow to heat up. Um, like our mug press, for example, takes less than 10 minutes to get up to temperature. This thing takes over 20. <laughs> So while that's heating up, I'm going to go get some lunch because it's just, yeah, it's, it's 25 past two. So yeah, I will be back to print some pennants, hopefully. Well, one pennant. <laughs> so I've just come through to the living room to show you a very silly boy. And he is making such a fuss. He's at the kitchen door, scratching at the carpet, trying to get in. Uh, he's really upset that he can't get into the kitchen. Uh, but I can't have him out there when I'm sublimating because one hair and two the heat press gets very hot and he is very dumb <laughs> and he would put his face on it. So I've had to compromise with him by giving him my blanket, which he loves, even though he's got his own. But now look at him. Look at how happy he is. <laughs> so th this is what happens when your cat is a big baby. Can't even stand to have the door shut for a few minutes. Mm. <laughs> Salem, say you silly. Yeah, you are. <laughs> okay, lunchtime. Okay, so I'm back and I've just given this uh, a 10 second press. That is just to get all the moisture out of it so that doesn't interfere with the print. Um, I'd already taken out the dowel that goes to this little sleeve here. So now all I need to do is flip it onto. Uh, the paper that I printed on and well print <laughs> okay so I've just stuck the pennant down with uh, some heat proof tape and then I need to get this into the machine I've got to flip it over uh, hopefully without it falling off the paper so I'm not gonna be able to film that because I need a lot of these jobs need two hands <laughs> so I did get um, an ink spot here which is uh, sort of a risk of printing full page I've got a little one on that corner too but it doesn't... Charlie! Sorry, that's my cat wanted to come in. Okay, I guess I'll let him in first before I print then. Right, cat's in. Paper's in the machine. And yeah, this is this will be the first time I've actually printed right up to the edge on one of these pennants. Usually I just do the design right in the centre. Uh, which has been fine. But uh, yeah, so hopefully this will work. So I'll just... Oh, I don't know if I can do this one-handed. Oh, there we go. And press it till it latches. Ooh. And then we just have to wait 75 seconds. Ooh, okay. Ooh. All right, so I'm just going to lift the paper at a corner and just see how well it's done. See if it needs more time. Oh, no, that looks all right. Ooh. Ah, 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 ah. oh, that's good. Ah. Oh, it worked. It worked. Oh, hold on. I need to come in from another angle. There it is. And that's come out really good. Okay, let's see if I can move it to the table. It is hot, 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 hot. hot. Ooh, hot, 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 hot. Oh my god, that came out so vibrant. And it's gone right up to all the edges. Well, that blue is nice. Oh my god. So yeah, I can print um, all the way up to the edges on these things. So that is good because this this was kind of the test. Um, yeah. All right. So I'm going to pop the, uh, give it a minute to go and then I'm going to pop the, the dowel back in. Um, but that's the paper. So you can see how it, it's taken. Sorry, that was, I used that to clean the, uh, to clean the press, get any dust off. So yeah, you see the way it, it takes the ink, because the way sublimation works is um, when you heat up the ink, it turns into a gas and it gets absorbed by the um, the polyester in these things. So that they're sort of part, I don't know whether they're all linen with a polyester coating or whether they're a mix, these, but it, it, it absorbs it and then it traps it in the fabric. So yeah, nice. All right, so I'll pop the, the little dowel back in and, and retied the string onto it. 
And yeah, I think that looks really nice. And I also got my friend uh, a pin. And I bought a, uh, plenty of pins and badges over the years for like birthday gifts and things. Uh, so I thought since I'm doing one of these, I should also do her a pin. So uh, this is a character uh, from a game she likes. It's a it's a white wolf. So yeah, now I just need to think of sort of like a a nice way to package this. Because I mean, you can roll them up pretty small, but then like, man, will that look good? But yeah, this was good because this was also the experiment to find out, you know, whether I really could print all the way to the edges and have it still come out like even and have the edges look nice. And yeah, I think that's going to look really nice hung on a wall. <laughs> so yeah, I, I will be doing, um, cause this isn't sort of the style I really do. I do, you know, a lot of floral things, a lot of toadstools. So I would like to do some sort of toadstool designs. I was thinking about having, like doing some painting where they, they look like they're growing up from the bottom of one of these, and then you can put your pins sort of above them. Uh, but yeah, no, that's something I'm going to have to, have to have a think about. But yeah, I'm glad this worked out. So before I pack the, the heat press away, I decided to do um, these two designs. Uh, these are for my mum's shop. Um, these are my watercolour illustrations that I did, I think. I want to say 2019, I'm not sure, but we had like um, a bunny themed box, which was a craft box filled with all sorts of things that I helped her out with. And I painted these two and we had them made into badges and I printed some mugs and they all went into the bag. I think there was a project bag in there that she made as well. But now we've, she sells them on these. And I know she just sold, I think, one of these. So I thought I'd do a, a top up and do her a couple before I put things away. And <laughs> I made one for me. <laughs> I wasn't going to. But then I was like, oh, I've got some pins that would look really nice on this background. Mm. So, <laughs> so yeah, now... <laughs> Now I've got my own as well. So yeah, I'm going to pack the heat press away now. I think that's everything that I needed to print today because I really just needed to do my uh, my friend's birthday present and it gets really warm. The, the heat press hasn't even been on too long. Well, actually, you know what? I suppose it has been on for a while. So the whole room is, is boiling and I'm, I'm going to need to open the back door to let the heat out. So yeah, hope you enjoyed watching the sort of process that I do of making these. Um, as like I say, this these these full prints ones have turned out nice. Uh, but like doing doing these kind are much easier because I just I just cut out the paper, stick it on the front, and I don't have to take the dowel out. I just let it overhang over the edge of the machine, so it's it's much quicker. But yeah, I like them all. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that. <sighs> okay. I think I have found out all my pins. Um, <laughs> didn't realise I had quite this many because some of them have been uh, sat around my room. Like these two, I've had sat on my shelf by my desk for a long time, still in their still in their packets. And a lot of them have been in a box where I keep a lot of the stuff that I buy. Well, used to buy at conventions um, <laughs> when we were allowed to have those and some of them have just been around <laughs> so i'm gonna choose i think all the ones that's kind of match with the colors like i think this one am i close enough yeah see that there's a little pancake stack in all different colors of purple so i think i'm definitely gonna have that one i might have audrey on there so yeah i'm just gonna go through and work out which ones i want to have decide to put on oh, sorry that's a little wobbly but let me go higher uh, I did decide to put on this uh, this little one here just to balance it out and I put Kirby at the bottom because he is a 
he's a big boy he's he's quite weighty he's quite big i think he's about two inches so that should just help weigh down the bottom and yeah i really like this i think it's come out so well and all my pins work really well particularly this sort of like glitter skeleton unicorn because it's got the pink the purple and the blue in and yeah this was a <laughs> this was a success you know because sometimes sometimes when i print the first design it doesn't always work um but yeah i'm gonna put this on my wall above my desk because i have a i have a little sort of screw up there from where there used to be a clock uh, there's nothing else on the wall though, so it's not very interesting, it's just white. And I will be making more of these pennants, and I would like to do some more, like I said before, some more florals. I would like to either have like mushrooms coming up, or some flowers around the edge. Uh, and then I could put these these other pins on, like this one. I think that'd look really nice. Ooh, I could do sunflowers. Oh, that means painting like a million petals again though. I'm gonna have to think about it because <laughs> this was just, was just supposed to be a quick thing to to make a present for my friend and <laughs> I feel like I've hijacked it a bit but yeah I've got a lot more pins here and I might have some somewhere else and I know there's definitely more that I want to get because I've seen some some because a lot of these are from uh, either small businesses or artists which is pretty much where I got all my pins from so yeah there's more more artists I want to get work from. So yeah, I hope you like seeing sort of like um, the designing, the process and the finished result. <laughs>with the digital art so for this piece I I like I really struggled with it um because I knew I wanted to do a bell jar I just didn't know what I wanted to put in it and I went through all sorts of things thinking oh it can have flowers in I could do roses and I'm like no that's too much like Beauty and the Beast and then um I was adamant I was going to have butterflies um but in the end I decided to scrap that idea as well and I decided to go for some crystals like a little crystal cluster crystal cluster <laughs> right in the middle and th this took some time because I don't remember the last time I drew crystals but I did decide to add in some sort of like fantasy style mushrooms because I don't know I can't help myself apparently mushrooms belong on everything now and I am that person um, <laughs> It is now my personality. Um, so yeah, I went with sort of these rainbow coloured crystals and then I had to decide sort of what the mushrooms were going to be. Originally I thought white, but that, I thought no, that's not going to stand out. It's going to be too similar to it, the line work of the crystals. Um, so I went with this sort of very pale blue and I made the caps sort of white on the outside uh, with a sort of bluish core. to kind of give the impression that they are sort of glowing like this is something you would find in a little magical hollow somewhere uh, and i added this moss that was creeping up the uh, the crystals um i've actually cut a bit out because i went too far with that i had the, i had that moss all over the crystals and i stood back at it and i looked at it and it was no no it looked like someone had thrown green spaghetti at it so, so i took that off and just kept it just at the bottom there and then for these crystals I went in to shade and highlight them so I've just taken darker colours of what's there and done these very sort of straight uh, sorry, shadows down each side and I just sort of placed them quite carefully all, all around the crystal trying not to overdo it because of the size of these since these are going to be little key rings um, they, need to, they need to be re readable when I resize them so if they're only going to be two inches tall I need these sort of shadows and highlights to to make sense which is why I always um, for these designs anyway I've kept things very simple uh, like I've kept I, I keep saying I'm keeping to a limited color palette but I don't think this counts in this one because I think I've got every color in <laughs> so for the the shadows I'm sort of I wanted to make them look like they're sort of within the crystal so then I can come in uh, with some white to do highlights that go over the top. So again, trying not to 
overcomplicate things, trying to keep things pretty simple. Uh, like I say, I've, this design just needs to be really readable. But I do add, I add the, the highlights right over the top of those shadows. Again, making sure like, trying to make it look like the shadows are underneath and within the crystals um, and the highlights are on the top. Because for these designs, because they're going to be clear crystals and um, clear acrylic, I can't have any sort of like transparencies. Um, I can't have like the crystals to be semi see through because it will not print like that. So I had to sort of get a bit creative in how I coloured these. Uh, it was fun though. I mean, once I figured it out, this this was really nice to do. It was actually quite 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 relaxing. Um, but I am realising, looking at the footage here, I think. I'm going to have to get uh, a matte screen protector for my my iPad because that'll get that should get rid of that sort of like grainy look that it sometimes has when you, you know you film another screen. Uh, and then for the highlights on the glass, I just did them very simple, very much in keeping with my other designs. Uh, all those edges there look a little bit grainy, but I do I do fix that before before it um, I'm done. And then I decided to add in these sort of like, like glowy orbs, not exactly sparkles, but sort of like just to give this a magical sort of look. So I realized that's the sort of vibe it has. And I realized that some of my, my work kind of does have that sort of, uh, sort of fairy tale look. Um, I think that comes when you, when you do any kind of fantasy looking mushroom. I think that just, that's what people think of. And it was, to fill up that sort of blank space around it, I felt that it just needed a little something. And there it is. Uh, I even added some little highlights to the mushrooms because they were looking a smidge flat. Um, but yeah, I really liked the way it came out. I added highlights to the bell jar just at the bottom there. Because uh, I, I didn't want to overdo it because there's actually quite a lot going off in this piece. Um, you know, I've got crystals, mushrooms, moss, sparkles, and then the jar itself. Um, but yeah, I really like how this piece came out. Uh, no, say that no, we don't eat the flower arrangements. Come on. Go on. Get your ears out of my shot. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, it's significantly warmer than it was when I filmed my intro and stop eating the flower arrangements come on so <laughs> so I'm currently drinking juice out of a strawberry uh, because I can really <laughs> hold on no oh it's so bad say hello naughty boy He's bad. He's trying to get the, the wheat bits because he loves them, but you can't have them. Anyway. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you uh, like the, um, the sublimating. Uh, there's definitely going to be more of that because I want to put uh, my designs on all sorts. I want to, because I can print mugs. So I'm thinking that some of the designs I'm doing now for my my little watercolor badges might translate over and look nice on a mug uh, and then of course I've got to have matching coasters obviously <laughs> um, and I can print on because I've got a mug machine down key <laughs> I've got a mug machine and I've got a sort of medium-sized heat press so I can go up to well I can print on A4 so that's as big as the thing I can print on which is why this worked because this is just shy of an A4 sheet and I love this so much. I think it came out so well. Um, so it does look, it does look a bit weird on its own because like I say the wall in my bedroom that I've got it on does not have anything else on it so it is just sat there on that blank white wall. Um, but yes, oh I gave that, uh, I've actually given it to my friend. She thought it was great, she loved it. She sent me a picture um, with the pin on and with some other pins on that she's got. So yeah, that went down well. Because um, I think these, these are going to make great gifts for people. Because uh, you don't actually have to put their name on if you don't want to. And you don't even have to use them as pins. You could just have them on on the wall as they are. 
Um, I've seen people do that a lot. But most mostly it's names and things. <laughs> this cat. <laughs> ah, so yeah, lots of more sublimating things to come. Uh, more painting, more drawing. Um, obviously that's probably not gonna gonna stop. And yeah, more cats since they insist on mooching around while I'm filming. He's not, he doesn't care. He's, he's, he's like just off camera. Um, so yeah, thanks for coming back. Um, not sure exactly when my Etsy shop will be up. I'm gonna say maybe, maybe a week from now. Um, I will definitely announce it. Uh, I'll, I'll probably announce it in, I don't know, my next, right, <laughs> in my next vlog if I know. Um, or, 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 or it might be on Instagram. You might even see my, the announcement before you see this video. Because yeah, I've got Instagram. Uh, I do have Facebook as well. It's Toadstool Art on all of them. <laughs> He's nibbling. Um, oh, my train of thought. Yeah, anyway. Uh, yes, thanks for stopping by. I think that's probably it for this week. Um, yeah, and it, it's warm out here. <laughs> I've got a cat trying to eat. No, no, no. Let go. Oh, it's in his mouth. This, this is what he wants. You want it? Oh, you, Bramble, you're here too. Okay, you guys are going to have to be banned when I'm filming because you are little monsters. Don't take another one. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's enough. All right. Thank you for stopping by. I will see you in the next vlog. Bye.